All days are pretty much blended into one, so I'm kind of late to the party, but better late than never, eh? Well, back in April, there was a very startling announcement that not one of us mere mortal fans really saw coming. BBC Studios brought to us the announcement of a brand new multi-platform extravaganza that would cover an absolutely massive amount of various different content types, with the exception of live-action TV for obvious reasons. When I first heard about it, I was like, oh my god. I mean, it was by no means a surprise to assume that the 10th Doctor would be involved because, well, it was his Doctor that went through the whole incident of being the Time Lord Victorious in the first place. And that is the name, so not only is he involved, he is also the main focus of it, evidently. But as well as this, we also have the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann being involved, and the 9th Doctor, but probably not with Christopher Eccleston involved. But one can always hope, you know? Even if that small speck of hope is dying by the minute. We shall see how things end up as they pan out. Also along for the ride is Rose Tyler, obviously played by Billy Piper in the show, but I'm not sure how far Billy's actual involvement, if any, will actually stretch. From the poster we know the Daleks are involved in a very dapper ood. How curious. Today we're going to round up all the new story information that we have about the Time Lord Victorious, and I'm also going to give you my opinion on them. I hope you enjoy. So what companies are being utilised in this massive multimedia event? So, firstly, we have Penguin Random House. From a logical perspective, they'll be contributing books because, well, it's Penguin, it's a very well known publishing company. So, moving on from that, we have Doctor Who Magazine, which goes without saying they'll be doing some coverage in maybe, maybe a uh, comic inside the comic, but I don't know that for certain. I'm just guessing because that's something they're also well known for. But obviously, we'll be getting probably interviews and articles relating to the Time Lord Victorious project as that goes along. Titan Comics! So we can expect a brand new comic miniseries somewhere down the line, maybe, possibly featuring the Ninth Doctor, I'd say. Uh, that's just guesswork. It is one of the mediums that can be tapped into to contribute a very nice visual uh, way of telling the story. Without obviously having to dip into TV. Escape Hunt. So we'll be getting a new special escape room challenge for this, I'm assuming. I did the Adalic Awakens one quite recently, with many thanks to my good friend Doctor Who Poop for bringing me along. And it was actually pretty damn cool. Definitely recommend it. When they all start up again, of course, obviously. Unfortunately, thanks to the lockdown, escape rooms are at a little bit of a disadvantage, but hopefully things will get back to a sense of normality in the next few months. Eagle Moss, Hero Collector. Now, Hero Collector do the pretty cool figurine collection, so I guess it wouldn't go amiss to suspect that we'll be getting figurines, maybe, that are styled within the Time Lord Victorious range. I would honestly love a Time Lord Tenant figure, not going to lie. That would be badass, absolutely, just to have displaying on the windowsill. Immersive Everywhere, the company behind Doctor Who Time Fracture, the immersive adventure that we still know very little about. That might be linked into this, I don't know. I feel that's more of a Jody thing though, so probably not. But I guess more will be announced as and when it does. Colour me intrigued all the same. I do love a good immersive adventure. Speaking of adventures, Maze Theory. The company behind the recently released and really quite very good Edge of Time VR game. So if we're to expect a game on this sub-franchise to be utilised to the same extent of it, then I'm very interested. BBC Books. Well, this goes without saying, as I shall shortly make clear, they've already announced a couple of the releases coming underneath this bracket, so we already have a clue what's going on. And BBC Audio as well, I'm expecting maybe some audiobooks of the BBC Books? We'll soon find out, I guess. And of course, we have the big boys, Big Finish Productions. When it comes to relationship with Doctor Who, very little compares to these guys, having made audio dramas for over 20 years. Again, it goes without saying, as I shall shortly make everything clear, that they have also announced a few releases that are coming under the Time Lord Victorious bracket. So altogether, this makes up a really expansive project of crazy high proportions, just what sort of overseeing story art could justify such a massive event that is literally taking so many forms of Doctor Who media to even put together? Well, the story is as follows, apparently, according to Big Finish's website. Time Lord Victorious will tell a new and untold story, set within the dark times at the start of the universe, when even the Eternals were young. Following several Doctors across space and time, as they defend their home planet from a terrible race, this is a story like no other. I mean, it certainly sounds ambitious, and it's certainly being told like no other. I mean, I have my concerns about how they're going to create a cohesive narrative over all of this, 
but it has been said you can enjoy one section of the Time Lord Victorious Media and still feel satisfied, so I'm hoping that's going to be the case overall. We also know the first stories that will be emerging from this. First of all, two novels centred around the 10th Doctor have been announced by BBC Books. The Night, the Fool and the Dead by Steve Cole. The Doctor travels back to the dark times, an era where life flourishes and death is barely known. Then come the Kutura, creatures who spread through the cosmos dispensing mortality. They judge each and every species and decree its allotted time to live. For the first time, living things know the fear of ending, and they will go to any lengths to escape this grim new spectre, death. The Doctor is an old hand at cheating death. Now at last he can stop it at source. He is coming for the Kotara, ready to change everything so that life wins from the start. Not just the last of the Time Lords, the Time Lord Victoria. This sounds genuinely intriguing to me as the Kotara sound immensely overpowered, and I hope I've pronounced that right. If I'm wrong, please do let me know. And reading about the Doctor trying to dispose of this species this intensely powerful would be pretty awesome. And it also sounds like the Doctor himself would be going a little bit mad with power since he is essentially trying to defeat a godlike species. The bigger the threat, the harder they fall. Of course, there is the second one, which as well sounds even more intense. All Flesh is Grass by Una McCormack Even a Time Lord can't change the past. A wasteland, a dead world. No, there is a biodome rising from the ashes. Here life teems and flourishes with strange lush plants and many winged insects with bright carapaces and one solitary sentient creature who spends its days talking to the insects and tending this lonely garden. This is Inuit, the last of the Kotara. In all flesh is grass, we are transported back to the dark times. The Tenth Doctor has sworn to stop the Kotara, ending death and bringing life to the universe. But his plan is unraveling. Instead of bringing life, nothing has changed and all around him people are dying. Death is everywhere. Now he must confront his former selves, one in league with their greatest nemesis, and the other manning a ship of the dead. Now this sounds intense, and definitely the one I'm very much anticipating. I'm not sure if it's already given the game away, but it clearly sounds like a part 2 to the Night of the Fall of the Dead. The first part sounds delightfully atmospheric, talking about Inyat, and it very much gives me Thanos in his shed vibes. Now as much as I'm a fan of deep character introspectives, one can't help but see the fact that this is where the 8th and the 9th Doctors will be coming into the story. The prospect of the 10th Doctor having to face off against these two Doctors in particular is pretty hardcore, one has to admit. Now it isn't just the books that have been announced, but also some big Finnish audio plays as well, starring none other than the audio medium's favourite Doctor, Paul McGann, in a brand new box set of Time Lord Victorious related stories. He Kills Me, He Kills Me Not by Kerry Thompson on the desert world of Arthana, the Doctor's life is about to be changed forever. Looking to visit one of the 700 wonders of the universe, the Doctor is quickly embroiled in a web of deceit. Worse than that, this wonder of the universe is missing, leading the Doctor to encounter one of his most dangerous and duplicitous adversaries. The Doctor is about to meet Brian. Brian the Ood Assassin is what it says here, and I must say, the concept of an Ood Assassin fills me with all sorts of confused feelings that I'm not quite sure how to summarize. But I will say this, it is nice to see an Ood going around killing people of its own volition for once instead of having to rely on a disease or the devil. So I'm very much looking forward to how... So I'm very much looking forward to hearing how they deal with this rather intensely bizarre choice of villain. Obviously it's all going to go somewhere in the grand scheme of things. Next up, we have The Enemy of My Enemy by Tracy Ann Baines. The people of Rax are happy to begin peaceful negotiations with the Dalek Empire. The two species are preparing to engage in an alliance that would last throughout the ages. The only one who seems to object to this happy union is the Doctor. He knows that you can never trust the Daleks, but more than that, he knows that the Raxians should have never existed. Okay, but you don't need to be an expert to know how this is going to turn out. Daleks? Peace? Please. There is more to this than meets the eye. It is plain to see and I can't wait to hear. It's going to be great. And also we have Mutually Assured Destruction by Lizzie Hopley. The fallout of the great battle 
outnumbered and alone on the Dalek timeship careering through the vortex. The Doctor must use all his cunning to survive. As the saucer disintegrates around them, the Doctor is trapped with a crew of increasingly desperate Daleks. Or are the Daleks trapped with him? Now this just sounds absolutely incredible, and probably the most tense episode of them all. It's a one-on-one -on -one between McGann and Nick Briggs in terms of acting credential. It's going to be epic. Plus, it's a strange kind of situation with the Daleks that could be easily flipped on his head, so again, it's going to be most fascinating. Plus, I'm a sucker for Dr. Dalek confrontations. It's bread and butter for Doctor Who. And finally, the short trips, which I really am super excited for actually. Two classic Master Tales. Master Thief by Sophie Isles. The Master wants to plunder one of the most secure vaults in the universe, the repository. He's got a plan and a deadly new weapon to assist him. However, as the Master quickly discovers, getting in might be easy, but getting away with it might cost him everything. And of course, there's also Lesser Evils by Simon Grera. The Cotterer have arrived on the planet Alexis to distribute the gift of death to its inhabitants. The only person standing in their way is a renegade Time Lord who has sworn to protect the locals, a Time Lord called the Master. Can I just say, knowing Sophie personally, I am super, super proud of her for getting to do something like this. It is absolutely astonishing. And two stories featuring the classic masters too. And believe me, I adore Anthony Ainley's master, so he's honestly one of my favorites. With these stories by the extraordinaire that is John Colshaw, we can expect some devilishly good impressions of them for sure. Honestly, these could be the underdogs of the entire box set. So. That means we'll have novels centered around the 10th Doctor, audio centered around the 8th Doctor, so I'm predicting comics for the 9th Doctor. I am concerned about how this is all going to come together though. Will that second novel give us the full story of everything and everything else is just background? Surely not. As with most of these things, there's going to be more than meets the eye with it, and it's going to be interesting to see what sort of information will be trickled out over the next few months. Also, to address the very small elephant in the room, it is quite fascinating that we have a Doctor Who massive multi-platform project in 2020, but with no Jodie Whittaker in sight. I mean, I guess it may be a rice thing, but still, it's certainly weird that they're not using the current Doctor for something like this, but I guess if they have a new story to tell with specifically 10, then by all means, let's go ahead and tell it. And it must be acknowledged that the 10th Doctor is still probably the general audience's most beloved New Who Doctor, and I mean the general audience, so outside of fandom. Heck, David Tennant in general is pretty beloved, and for good reason. If any era is going to be revisited, then it does make logical, and indeed business sense, to use his. I mean, I know for certain that there's definitely a rights issue when it comes to uh, using the 13th Doctor in things like Big Finish, but I guess we'll see if anything else crops up. We never know. We don't know everything about this project yet, that's the thing. So, we will see. There is also the financial cost of how much this is all going to go up to as well. But I am very much hoping that the case will be that you can dip and choose whatever parts of the media you want without any consequence in missing out on anything crucial. But right now, that second temp Doctor novel does seem like the main meat of the story. But it could just be a misnomer. We'll soon find out. So, we've all said and done. That is the story so far with the Time Lord Victorious. Overall, I'm definitely very excited to see how all these bits will meld together. What are your thoughts on it? And which bits are you looking forward to the most? What do you hope is going to come for this project? Is there anything specific that you hope is going to happen with it? Well, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I will have some very exciting news regarding the channel very soon that I hope you will all enjoy. I'm thinking this Sunday, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, until then, See ya!